So hackathons are, uh, are interesting concepts, and I think the main thing we first have to do is establish it's not a bad thing. It's really people coming together to work on a common goal and hack a solution. But with a hackathon, we want people to come and work on our product, and hopefully by the end of, say, a 24 or 48 hour period, you've been able to really work on the glasses and see what are some ideas that we haven't thought of, or, or what are some ways that we can utilize these in a whole new way. We're hosting it here on site at Epson America Incorporated in Long Beach. Uh, a lot of people don't know that where Epson is located. They, they don't realize there's a lot of technology companies here in the greater Los Angeles area. So we really want to bring some attention to the fact that tech is alive and well in, in the Los Angeles area. And that'll give us an opportunity to partner with a lot of people here locally as well as uh, throughout the country. Um, we've been, we're really happy with the turnout and just seeing the energy uh, in that room is, is just mind-blowing for me. Um, usually that's where we have uh, you know, some all-employee meetings and uh, that's like our lunchroom. So actually seeing everyone uh, in there developing and getting their hands uh, you know, into the product is, is really cool and um, you know, bringing a lot of great ideas. We're partnering uh, with Mateo, which is an augmented reality company. They're going to come down and give a talk about what they see as the vision of, of augmented reality for the future and then also provide support. They've built a free SDK, a software development kit, for developers to work on. And so they're going to be experts in helping people use their software and combine it with our hardware to really get some great results. Tayo is the augmented reality company. Um, been around for about 10 years doing custom industrial installations for automotive, factory planning, construction. Uh, from there, we kind of branched off into mobile, uh, now offer a platform for developers to make their own augmented reality apps and experiences. We've got about 50,000 developers on that platform now, which is pretty cool. I'm seeing lots of, lots of computer screens open with, with code on the screen. You know, I, um, we definitely see a lot of prototyping going on. You know, people are hacking cameras onto the Moverio, zip tying those things on. Uh, it's not the prettiest solution, but it's uh, hopefully going to result in some uh, cool demos. Okay, well, I've been involved in wearable computers since uh, 1991. Uh, so uh, I wanted to see for myself uh, the Moverio would be a good uh, display, heads-up display for wearable computing. I just need a relatively inexpensive, uh, transparent display, which the Moverio seems to fit the bill. I'm interested in coming this week because I think headsets are the future of technology. I think eventually they will be replacing smartphones and I think it's the new medium to interact with things. Um, I think they revolutionize the way we interact in a way where we can add much more value and that's why we decided to make an application for people who want to exercise. We're making a 3D avatar that uh, will run the track at your previous time and then you can follow your ghost and try to uh, improve your own record and that's what we're working on so hopefully you guys will like the demo. Looking at augmented reality for the as a technical applications, I do a lot of event marketing, and I was looking at this as another platform for a lot of my clients to be able to use as a way of being able to illustrate their brand to their clients, and so that was why I was intrigued by it. And what we're, the, myself and the team are working on is we're doing a presentation about doing an augmented reality in you know, like a theme park environment where we can do a haunted maze, something that people can walk around and be frightened and because now the video is being encoded right in front of their eyes and being able to see the real world and then an augmented reality world right in front of it. Well this is my first foray into uh, augmented reality so um, this is a really awesome platform to experiment with and um, the SDK has been really fast and easy to get up and running. Well our concept is we're trying to make augmented labels for everyday objects that you might run into and you know label um, your computer or, you know, just to add augmented data to, uh, to everyday objects. Awesome. The great thing about um, Matayo, their platform and augmented reality and smart glasses is they kind of go hand in hand. It's very complementary in the respect that um, the smart glasses allow you to see the digital content overlaid over the real world. When you hold up a tablet, you're looking at the world through a small, maybe a 9.7 inch screen and that's it. The rest of the world is still there and, and, and you're only really impacting a little bit of it. But when you're able to wear glasses and if you can expand the field of view where anytime you look around left or right 
you see in additional information overlaid on buildings, on businesses, or you're having new models actually rendered on it. This is all capability you can't do with a tablet right now. A tablet is almost passive augmented reality. You're looking at it, it's putting something interesting, it's putting a little information on, but that's the extent of what it can do. Hands-free, uh, you know, it's something that has been bandied about in discussions uh, almost like as a punchline since like 2002 because we all recognize that hands-free could change the industry but it always seemed like an infinite carrot on a string kind of thing where it's always on the horizon and you can't really wait for it, you can't really plan for it, you have to stick with mobile or whatever you have. And for me, the wearable computing and, and the hands-free is really, I believe, like the penultimate destiny of augmented reality. Um, uh, and Epson has a, has a great product and the potential and the possibilities. Um, so that's one reason why I'm here. Another, I just, I want developers to know that we have these SDKs and that we're building these relationships and that just so they know that Matayo is optimizing their software for the next generation of devices. You know? And that's, that's basically why I'm here. Plus, you know, I just, I like you guys, so I'm here. That's the way it is. <laughs>